Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. The Alpha 3.5.1 CPTU patch is out to Wave 2, which means that some of the more engaged backers, in addition to Evocati, RSI subs and Concierge, will have access to the game. More waves to follow. Let's look at the patch notes and the state of the PTU as it stands. So the new 3.5.1 C PTU patch is out. Uh, its testing focus is ship customization, the 300 series ships, and servers despawning the players' ships. But there's a load of quality of life improvements and uh, some of the more core things that it's also focusing on. Some new updates and bug fixes. Ship item prices have been updated to reflect changes to the item pool. They've increased thruster performance and reduced drag for the 350R. Auto land should once again work properly. Ships should no longer lose their texture and paint when destroyed. Players should no longer be able to walk onto the 300 series bed and become stuck. Purchasable ships should now be working and appear at the new deal ship shop. They fixed issues with the loadout pack items overheating and powering down. Dropping pilots should no longer cause the multifunction displays to go blank. Claiming insurance on a destroyed ship should no longer occasionally cause it to be returned with no items. They changed the range limiter on the Siren Quantum Drive to fix short range jump issues. Destroyed ships are are now read only in the VMA, the Vehicle Manager app, including in the hangar, preventing them from going into a bad state. Passengers on other ships should now have their spawn location saved upon arrival at a new station. The cargo bay exterior color of the 300 series should now match the paint of the ship and they fixed a client crash. There are still some known issues that they're working through. NPC assist beacons no longer function correctly if the server has been up for a while. AI pilots might not react to players. Bed logout doesn't work properly on planetary services and may be inconsistent elsewhere. Voice, uh, chat and facial tracking do not transmit to other players in direct calls. Ships upgraded to A300 series currently might not be customizable properly. The customize option under my hangar does not always function. Customizations sometimes don't display properly in my hangar if the ship is in a package. CPU spikes may occur near Lawville, resulting in a stall. Leaving floor 1 elevator at Adria Falls in area 18 may instantly kill the player as well. With the customization system, more specifically they released some patch notes for that, uh, so there are no known issues with that as well. There's no active storefront a bug that occurs if uh, you try and run the ship customizer without having visited the store. Customization can sometimes forcibly be applied to a ship of the same type when customizing another one, and there are missing layers on the 300i. The customization system has seen some updates. Uh, customization items are now displayed on the order summary of the invoice. Upgraded ships can now be customized. You can now buy back a melted customized ship. Customization choices now appear in order created, payment received emails. Navigating in Pledge Store Carousel no longer breaks it. The 300i seat image is no longer invisible for sport, white leather and carbon fiber yellow. Uh, various packages have been updated with the correct pictures. Selecting show customization detail uh, now works properly. All images are now showing up on the 325A and 350R as well. Uh, using the customize button from shopping carts no longer spawns an extra ship in the cart. Taxes are now appropriately applied even when buying a customization. With that customization system looking at it, they could very easily put skins and flare items in the game so they sort of like could be customized and added to your ship through the ship loadout manager that we already have, which supports different skins even now, and they could make it all in like available in game for in-game credits. I'm hoping that they do something like that, either putting the full manufacturer customization system in game for 3.6 or 3.7, or just those particular areas of it as aftermarket customization, maybe again potentially targeting for those patches. It doesn't look to me like it would take much work, but it depends on their priorities and lots of other stuff. I want to talk about some of how the patch plays and the state of the PTU at this stage. The problems with weapons deviating from where you are aiming has returned, but only occurs sometimes. In general, combat works in some areas much better and other areas still pretty bad. So um, hits register on ships. Uh, ships are much less rubber bandy, but they're still incredibly jittery and I do make a, a, a 
difference there. I do draw a line between rubber bandiness and jitteriness. Rubber banding would be jumping everywhere. Jitteriness is constant ship wobble and much sort of like smaller scale, rapidly vibrating rubber bandiness is the only way I can sort of like describe it. And at least uh, that's the way I see it. The jitter really makes all other aspects of aiming not work as intended and, and combat not work as intended. But it does seem to be a bit hit and miss based on what server I'm on. Sometimes I haven't had much problem with it and everything seems to work pretty well. Missiles work much better and actually hit targets. They don't want to hug them constantly. Uh, but fixed weapons still have problems. However, there does seem to be a concerted effort in getting combat in as good a place as possible for 3.5.1 hopefully they'll also push uh, even more for 3.6 getting it in a very good place however ai pilots do still go afk at times or even if they don't they still don't fire much or even when they do engage with it with a player they don't really provide any real challenge yet they need to fix AI as a priority, in my opinion, and getting that jitter sorted, getting the AI sort of like working. The problems are partly due to server degradation and them being overloaded, those servers. They're sort of like at the, the very, 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 very extreme limits of what their servers can do at the moment. They're currently building out AI for the game as well, so I suspect anything they get in now for 3.5.1 or 3.6 even will be a bit of a bodge job and temporary fix. Um, some of those sort of like deeper server optimizations are planned for 3.6. We won't know exactly what they can do until it's in our hands though, but I'm hoping 3.5.1 will be pretty playable. The Origin 350R was, in my opinion, in pretty awful state in the previous PTU patch, uh, basically performing like any other 300 series, really. It's supposed to be a racer, um, and now they are, uh, or at least seem to be aware that they're balancing it for being a viable racer and also useful in the persistent universe. Uh, I don't want it just to be better than all of the other 300 se series because then I'd grab a 300 uh, through, well, 350R and then customize it for combat or whatever I wanted it if it was just better. Uh, I want it to be different. Uh, I want it to be focused on racing not just because of its components but also some other changes. Otherwise I can just customize my 300i to be the same as the 350r do you see what i mean uh, in the ptu at the moment when you copy your account over you are given 175 dollars of store credit to use in the ptu phase you don't just get given free money free money um, it's just for testing purposes of the 300 series um, customization as i've previously said as well one of the best things this 3.5.1 branch brings is the fact that any ship um, that you change, that you customize, that you change the weapons on in, with in-game money uh, or whatever, those changes will persist uh, even after you reclaim the ship. So this gives many more reasons to actually play and toil for something. Insurance will evolve in the future and these kinds of mechanics are sort of like placeholder until then, uh, but this is much, much better than what we've previously had. Obviously, we are going to be getting a reset with 3.6, so um, I doubt people are going to really power play uh, for like the, the next month, but when 3.6 comes out, and assuming that they keep those changes in where your customizations will persist and there's going to be uh, ships to rent and more ships to buy, there's a lot more reasons to play. Passengers on ships as well now get the location that the pilot lands as a spawn point, um, assuming that they landed in a major uh, landing area. So if your ship with the, I know, 20 passengers in a Valkyrie or whatever, if you land at Lawville, all of the people that land at Lawville with you get that as their spawn point, whereas previously they didn't. That's super useful. Uh, MFDs working for crew more consistently is um, super useful as well. That actually makes multi sort of like crew gameplay a lot better. And um, they do need to keep on working on that. Multi crew gameplay, um, uh, party system, all that sort of stuff. There's just not enough there yet uh, to make it super viable without. It, it's much more viable and much more fun um, typically to either be a gunner on a ship or bring your own ship rather than running a sort of like second terminal for multifunction display, shields, power, and, and all that sort of stuff. Having someone specifically doing that that's not the pilot, it just isn't that great at the moment. Um, it will be eventually once they flesh it out a bit more, admittedly, but um, we're not there yet. We're also moving towards a more dynamic economy with shop inventories being more appropriately represented in the game. They have stocks uh, doing a bit better. They are trying to improve uh, various different trade lanes and trade routes and, and commodities and get those narcotics sort of like have more use in the verse. Obviously, again, that's going to be more for 3.6 with the black market and the law system, admittedly. Uh, performance is pretty good frame rate wise, though. Um, probably the best it's ever been for me. Uh, I uh, have been hearing that there's some hitching problems uh, when you are around Lawville. I haven't actually experienced that myself. 
Uh, planets, moons, and lighting look a bit better to me. Um, there's new assets and core bits on Arc Corp, new buildings, uh, that sort of stuff. It's the, the generation there um, is broken in some areas a little bit with the sort of like buildings going popping out of the floor where they probably shouldn't. Uh, but again, I suspect that they can tweak that probably even before a 3.5.1 live. It's good to see them expand those areas out further and keep on improving their tech. They are working on uh, Procedural Planet Tech version 4 and Procedural Effects for those version 4 at the moment as well, in addition to loads and loads of other things. Uh, access to missions is good. Um, the servers are a little unstable though. I had a couple of crashes uh, throughout uh, maybe a four hour play session. Generally, there are a lot more quality of life improvements um, going into that 3.5.1 PT patch than anything else. And they do go a good way to fix the problems with 3.5, but there's still a load more to solve. They need to power through those known issues and get something in place for AI, um, really, in my opinion. Hopefully, within the next couple of days, I suspect that if they do, then we'll have a very playable 3.5.1 live for this weekend. And um, that will continue until we have 3.6 released, which is assumedly going to be at the end of June still, although the late release of 3.5.1 could have a knock-on effect, potentially delaying 3.6 live release, but we'll have to wait and see. But what do you think? Do you think we'll see 3.6 sort of delayed? When do you think we'll see 3.5.1? At the end of the week with the sort of like origin celebration and the customization system, or maybe pushed back later? Um, do you think that's a possibility? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for June. We have an Origin 890 Jump, the massive luxury ship that should also be flyable with Alpha 3.6 at the end of the month. That is a huge, huge sort of like capital luxury ship. It's been donated by Odyssey Interstellar, a friendly industrial expansionist organization in Star Citizen that focus on mining, trading, industry, exploration, research, and infrastructure. In short, commerce is their goal. They run regular weekly events in-game now. Please check them out if you are looking for an org to join. Links down below. There are a couple of services I shield for as well that you might find useful. If you're looking for a VPN, then check out NordVPN. I use it for security privacy and more it has massive advantages over free vpns and if you use the code board gamer you get 75 percent off your subscription boom also there is shadow cloud gaming this is an alternative to having your own or upgrading your gaming rig on pc it leverages the power of the internet and your own shadow server that emulates a high spec windows 10 pc so you can play up to 144 hertz 4k anywhere with an old pc laptop smartphone or even tablet Freedom to play anywhere. The internet is good enough anyway. And it works really well with Star Citizen and all the games that I play. And is constantly updated and even improved with new hardware. Again, use the code BoardGamer for discount. Links below to all of that jazz. Thank you to all that support the channel through Patreon, the YouTube join button, donations, subscribe star, as well as anyone that just generally subscribes, likes, comments, and shares my content. Dings that bell. Ding, ding. If you feel so inclined, you can find uh, links to all of that down below. A special thank you, though, to my VIP producers this month, Dalamars, Catastrus, Raz, Gear Khan, General Ventador, Robert Johnson, and Andy Green, who have given well beyond the norm in support for the channel. I know a load of other people have, but I can't name them all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse. <laughs>